Now, the starting point is there is a work which is not terribly well known on equal temperament by Zhu Zayu, who lived between 1536 and 1611 in the Ming Dynasty, during the Ming Dynasty, and that's the textbook. And that was written between 1567 and 1581. Now, I got some things on the context in which this particular discovery was made. Now, the first thing to remember is that the ancient Chinese music is not just a matter of entertainment and amusement, but it had a very important role in the rites and rituals of the court. There was an existence of a belief that the downfall of a dynasty was caused by a flaw in the ritual music of that court. So that every dynasty from the time of the Zhu dynasty was dictated by the need to establish a correct ritual <coughs> music to prolong its survival. So basically the survival of a of any rule depend on getting the correct ritual music. That's the context in which it developed. And continuing with the context, the correct ritual music required that the scale and tonal pitch used agreed with numerical ratios, reflecting the relative positions representing the planets. So it was tied up with also astronomy. So, for instance, the 12 tones also represented the cyclical return of a 12-month year. So there was an attempt at tying up ma music, mathematics, calendar, as well as astronomy. Then now comes to priority and transmission of these ideas. Now, who did this first? Three people usually mention are Mersan, and the figure that is usually given for his publication is 1636 to 37. Stevin, 1595 or slightly later, or Zhu, who is not later than 1581. So these are three. So on the basis of this, the priority would be of course <coughs> Zhu's. Now, interestingly, if you look through a whole lot of the books, on this, and I got, uh, for those who are interested, uh, I got a list of these books with me here. Why is this not better known, or why is this particular information? Quite often, Stevin is usually credited with this by those who are theorists of the particular music or the history of music. And I suggest that maybe it is a form of invisibility, which I defined earlier. Could this knowledge have been transmitted from China to the West? Now we come to the transmission idea. The question then arises, what is the problem of proof? How do you show that any knowledge is transmitted from China or from country A to country B? Now, who were the agents? And I'm going to make the conjecture that they were the Jesuits. <coughs> uh, let's take this a bit further now. How do, you, how do I establish transmissions? Now, obviously, there is nothing in either Stevin or Mercian's book that the idea is, if you establish transmission from China to the West, there's nothing in either Mercian or Stevens' book, which suggests that the, the ideas came from China. So, you can't use a golden standard of proof in this case because there is no written evidence. So, what, what is your particular path? It's called the compelling circumstantial route. Now, what does this involve? And this is something that we suggest as a way of approaching it. First of all, establish a chronology of priorities of occurrence. Now, priority, I don't think there is a lot of doubt now that uh, Zhu's was prior to the other two. Though between Zhu and Stevin, the, the difference in the, sort of the lapse of time wasn't that great, but there was still a lapse of time. 
Secondly, establish the agency and the existence of accessible communication routes. This is the opportunity element. Now, in this case, one is conjecturing that the agency were the Jesuits, and I, I will go on to sort of uh, say more about that. Finally, is identifying the methodological, algorithmic, or epistemological similarity or dissimilarities between the two particular cultures that one is talking about, which are called as similarities. Now, agents and roots of transmission. Now, we have argued that, I won't go into it in great detail, but that there are two possible roots, and both involve the Jesuits. Now, there is evidence that there was a bind biannual fair that was held in Macau and say 1580 and 1582 were for examples there where there was a whole lot of not just exchange of goods alone taking place not but a lot of western westerners including Jesuits came to this particular fair and this was a possible route for the transmission of these ideas and equal temperament. Another and possibly it could be also the uh, yeah it could also be both of these operating together was so the second route was starting with zoo now we had next one of Matthew Ricci, by the way, those who are not familiar with Matthew Ricci, Matthew Ricci is one of the great names um, of a Jesuit who actually, what we know about him now in a lot of the histories of science is that he took a lot of ideas both in astronomy, in mathematics, from the West to China. For instance, he was the first person who, with the help of some Chinese scholars, uh, translated Euclid into Chinese. His work on astronomy, astronomical works, particularly providing some introduction to Western astronomy, was something also he wrote about that. He was one of the great figures in this sort of interchange between China and Europe. Now, one of his disciples was called Li, who was also the, the director at one stage of the Bureau of Rituals in the Chinese court. And he was bound to have known something about Zhu's work, and as a disciple of Ricci, and of course Ricci himself was quite well knowledgeable about music, yeah, he took some uh, particular musical instruments to China, apart from mechanical clocks and others, which was quite a sensation in the court itself. Now, the, the argument is that this is the particular line, Zhu to Li, Li to Ricci, Ricci to Clavius, who was actually, at one stage, he was both a teacher of Ricci, as well as he was the, uh, he was the, uh, professor of mathematics in the Collegio Romano, which was the main Jesuit institution. He's quite an important name in the history of mathematics at a particular, at that point in time. Now, through Clavius, there was Trigault, who in <coughs> fact translated some of Ricci's journals, which also includes a mention of music. And then, through that, translations went to Steven, and from Steven went to Mersan, because Steven, some of the work done by Steven was in turn passed on to Mersan, who wrote, both Steven and Mersan wrote on equal temperament. <coughs> 